Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be going over prevention of infection in surgical sites. Okay, so after someone has surgery and either they have stitches or staples, how to prevent infection in these areas. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be truly appreciated as it really does help my channel grow. So let's get started. So what is a surgical site infection? So a surgical site infection is when there are too many active bacteria on a surgical site. Okay, so this can cause pain and delayed wound healing. And in more severe cases, it can actually cause the bacteria to spread to the bloodstream, which can lead to tissue loss, organ failure, and even death. Okay, so a surgical site infection, it can be on the surface or deep. How much damage it causes just totally depends on how strong, healthy a person is and how strong that bacteria is and how it is affecting your tissue. So some things you can do before surgery to prevent surgical site infections, because there are things that actually do increase your risk of surgical site infection or make the wound take longer to heal. So if a wound is taking longer to heal, there's more chances that you will get a bacterial infection in there. Okay, um, so you can improve your chances of smooth healing by making sure you do everything to optimize your situation before surgery, okay? So you can talk to your healthcare professional to help you optimize your health. Um, but just in general, we want to look at your general health, make sure we're optimizing that, adjust medications that might impair wound healing, such as steroids. We want to manage our diabetes, obesity, heart disease. Um, and if somebody isn't getting the proper nutrition, we want to make sure we're optimizing their nutrition before surgery, because this increases their chances of healing okay um and then we also want to make sure that we don't have any underlying infections okay um especially in elderly they seem to get bladder infections a lot so we want to be treating any sort of infections before surgery um some of these things can actually take a long time to do so we want to make sure that we are making these appointments be well before our surgery optimizing our chances of healing after surgery so there are actually things you can do on your own before surgery that will reduce risks of post-surgical complications. So reducing or eliminating smoking, um, substance misuse, alcohol consumption. If we can reduce this, it is, it is great. Um, increase physical activity. So the fitter you are, the less likely you are to encourage, um, sorry, encounter complications. Um, so if you aren't already active, start just by walking, okay? Um, you want to be eating healthy, so optimize your nutrition before and after surgery, okay? Eat healthy. Um, and then follow your surgeons before surgery instructions very closely. Um, if they tell you not to shave the area beforehand, don't shave the area. If they tell you to shower the day of, do so, um, which pretty much every before every surgery, they want you to shower that day. Um, and then if they tell you to use a special skin disinfectant, use that. Um, and then you just want to prepare mentally for your surgery. Um, just learn as much as you can. So hopefully this increases your comfort level and reduces your anxiety, okay? Ask all the questions you need to your doctor beforehand because anxiety and stress put you at higher risk for complications. So we want to reduce that. Um, and then just prepare for your return home after surgery. Um, have equipment, supplies, support that you may possibly need because once again, stress and anxiety, if you don't have things ready, um, this can add to that and your body cannot heal when it's in a state of stress and anxiety, okay? Now, things you can do after surgery. So it is imperative that we are following our surgeon's instructions after um, being in the hospital and when we go home, okay? So just general care. We're going to continue managing our medical condition. Um, 
either reduce or stop smoking, continue that after surgery, eat healthy meals, um, any factors that you identified before surgery that put you at risk for surgical complications, just make sure you're being aware of that. Um, and then personal hygiene, in most cases, showering is allowed, uh, but no uh, sitting in a tub or swimming. Once again, follow the specific instructions of your surgeon. Um, and then your surgeon may have requested that you wear supportive garments or um, something specific after surgery, um, such as an abdominal binder. Make sure that you are wearing these and follow their instructions very closely, okay? Um, because that can definitely cause complications. We want to make sure that we're following it. There are reasons that is giving you the best possible chances of healing. And I am telling you when I say this, believe me, you do not want post-surgical complications because they can take months and months and months to heal. If we have to heal something by secondary intention, it's going to take a long time and you will be off work for much longer than expected. It brings more stress and anxiety. It's not what we want. So we want to be healing by primary intention, okay? We do not want these complications. So this is just continued. Um, so we want for wound care, you're gonna wanna follow your surgeon's home health plan, okay? Now, if you're finding that you can't do the wound care, okay, and if you don't have a family member or somebody who can do this wound care, you need to be getting a hold of a surgeon because they can refer you to a home health agency who can provide these services, okay? Depending on your location, either you'll have to pay for it, your insurance will cover it. Um, in Canada, it is a free service, um, so it just depends on your location. Um, now, pain management. So you're going to follow your doctor's instructions for pain management. Um, it's usually done by medication, but you can consider other ways of pain relief. So music therapy, meditation, it can reduce your anxiety and your pain. Um, now, as time goes on, your pain should be less in the wound. If your pain is getting worse, that is a good indication that there is an infection there, okay? if drainage is increasing, if pain is increasing, um, if you had redness and swelling, you want to be getting a hold of that doctor surgeon right away because that is a perfect indication that there is infection and the sooner we catch it, the sooner we can deal with it and the less chance of serious complications. The longer you wait, those bacteria just keep multiplying, okay? Um, and then also with pain management, if your pain is say at a seven and it's a consistent seven and it's not getting any better, our bodies also can't heal properly when we're in pain. So make sure before you leave that hospital that you are telling them the truth of how much pain you are in. Um, if the pain isn't being managed well enough, okay, if it's not bringing you down to a two or a three, you need to be telling them this um, because your your wounds are not going to heal properly if you're in pain. Our body doesn't allow our bodies to heal when we're in pain. Next, we have physical activity after surgery. So you're going to follow your surgeon's instructions about physical activity, um, but you have to be super careful. Be cautious. Too much or the wrong type of physical activity can pull apart a wound, okay? So say you have an abdominal wound and you're you're just moving the wrong ways that you shouldn't be, it can completely open up and unfortunately things can start coming out of that hole. Um, so definitely not something we want. So we want to be careful of how quickly um, we start exercising and moving. Now, in general, gentle exercise is a really good thing, but follow what your surgeon tells you, okay? Um, and then just use your common sense. If something's starting to hurt or you feel something kind of pulling, don't push it. If you feel something pulling in that area, stop, okay? You need time to heal. 
and if we completely open that up, we're starting back at square one, right? So, um, and then just next, just know when your follow-up appointments are, who you need to be talking to, because I know, um, at least in the area that I'm located, after surgery, after you leave that hospital, you are then on your primary care providers watch okay so you need to be following up with your doctor your nurse practitioner not the surgeon that's at least what we do here for the most part i mean some surgeons do the follow-up but for the most part find out who you need to be following up with okay so then i'm just going to go over the signs and symptoms of a surgical site infection okay um so your Surgical incision, it should be improving each day after surgery. But if you experience any of these signs, please get a hold of your primary care professional, okay? So increased redness. So if anything is increasing, so increased drainage, increased pain, increased redness, um, the fluid coming out, the odor, um, if you have new fevers or chills, new warmth around the incision sites, um, increased wound pain, increased fatigue and feeling unwell, increased swelling, increased, increased hardness around that incision site. Anytime we have changes that are for the worst or our health feels worse, we need to be contacting our healthcare professional right away because more than likely there is a surgical site infection brewing. So what to expect if we have a surgical site infection? So these are the typical steps taken by your healthcare professional um, if a infection is suspected. So we'll take a swab of the wound, okay? It gets sent to the lab and then within a few days you should know. So either you have a follow-up visit or a phone call with the results. Um, and then they'll place you on an antibiotic that suits the infection. So they'll actually test to see which antibiotics will work best if there's any antibiotic resistance. So we need to find out what will kill those bacteria the quickest and use that. That's why we do the swab. Um, and then sometimes we have to increase or change our wound dressing routine. And these normally include antimicrobials that we're putting on the wound um, just topically. Um, so it could be your silver, your iodine, um, your chlorhexidine. It just completely depends what um, they choose to use. And that fights um, the infection rate topically. Um, and then sometimes our Antibiotics are given in pill, liquid, or even intravenously, depending on how bad the infection is. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you did find it helpful um, if you're going to have surgery or if you've already had surgery. Um, I hope you did find it helpful, and I will catch you all in my next video. See you guys.